too much for one book. I already have to worry about paying for tuition, my gas for my car, having money for food, and my rent this month. This is way too much of a burden for an in-debt student like me. Same here. We're all college students too, and we all have to worry about the same financial issues as you do, but we all have also fallen into the trap of overpriced textbooks. Yeah, as students who have been going here for over uh, a year now, we should know how to work the system better. Textbooks are seriously overpriced, and there are other alternatives to buying a textbook rather than buying it at full price for college students like us. There are real problems that come with buying textbooks. And there are always cheaper ways to get your books. Sometimes you don't even have to buy the book. But there are still some reasons why you should pay the bookstore price. We shouldn't have to pay for something that's so overpriced, though. If we take a look in history, you'll see that textbook prices have skyrocketed over the years. According to Mary Beth McLean, uh, in her article, College Students Say No to Costly Textbooks, written on August 20th, 2013, textbook prices have risen 82% in the past decade. In surveys done, it showed that the average college student spent $662 per year on required course materials in 2012. This averages out to $2,648 spent on course materials alone over a period of time at a four-year school. That's almost a year's tuition at ECC. Amber, we totally understand where you are coming from, and that's why we hang around the bookstores so that other students know the tips and tricks we have learned for saving some serious coin. Um, there are a few options when it comes to getting and purchasing textbooks that are cheaper, new, and used. Um, I have personally used both of these methods, and I can testify for them. First place I always look for cheap textbooks is Amazon.com or eBay.com. Excuse me? If you purchase books from your school's bookstore, you can be sure you have the right edition. Many teachers require the most updated versions because some material will not be in older ones. Yeah, but sometimes the older edition works just as well as the newest one. I bought this book online and it's the oldest edition. The 11th edition that I'm selling in the bookstore was selling for over $130 and I got this for only $20. I compared both of the books and they say exactly the same thing. Same organization, same words, everything. The only differences are the design and the pictures. Just so students know, the bookstore website gives an ISBN number and the authors of all the books that you need, and then you can just copy and paste that into any search engine and find other places selling those books. That's exactly what I do. Uh, Amazon and eBay have the option of buying or renting the books. <clears throat> they could be new or used depending on what you like and how much you're actually willing to spend, because I know I'm not willing to spend as much as your book that you're selling. Um, most used books are significantly discounted, and they barely have any wear and tear. Most of my books are used, and you can't even tell. Um, if you don't care to even keep the book because it's for a gen ed course or even for something unrelated to your major, just rent it. Um, uh, there are plenty of online renting websites. I found Chegg.com, BookRenter.com, even Amazon will have renting places, not only buying. Um, in an interview with Dan Rosenweig of Chegg, conducted by Eric Jackson on February 27th of 2013, he explained what uh, Chegg was all about to him. He said, the company started a number of years ago on a very simple premise. A student was fed up with uh, the high cost of acquiring textbooks. We're looking for a new model to be able to reduce the cost of textbooks, and ultimately, it became a book rental model. He also said that our mission is to save students time, save them money, and help get them smarter. How are you going to do that without textbooks? Uh, all we do is put students first, he said. This is uh, an enormous opportunity because having college-aged kids myself, I learned not only how expensive it is, that was clear, but how complicated, how stressful, and how fragmented it really is. So why should we have to go through the stress just by a textbook for a class that we'll need once in our life? Um, if having the physical book isn't uh, necessary for you, maybe you should just download the ebook. I've done that plenty of times as well. Beth Fragerman from Forbes Magazine, in an article titled, Seven Ways to Pay Less for Textbooks, written January 28th, 2015, accessed November 29th of this year, says that you um, can download ebooks that will lighten your load and your spending. They make them for tablets, the Kindle, the Nook, which are <clears throat> electronic book resources, and also, there's no physical paper to pay for, so you don't have to pay the extra prices of printing or publishing. Um, also, if your class requires an access code such as sciences, maths, you can go on to their um, publisher website, buy just the access code that comes with a free ebook, and then you don't even have to worry about purchasing a book new or used. 
those are around fifty to eighty dollars too. Um, there's nothing to carry around except all the money you're going to save. Sometimes you don't even need to buy the book. I read an article by Kelsey Sheehy on August 14, 2013, about how to get textbooks for free, and her first suggestion was to visit the campus library. Sometimes professors will put their books on reserve for the required courses, and sometimes the library will also keep extra copies of the most common course books, such as speech or introduction to sociology. Usually you can only borrow them for a short amount of time or use them in the library, but that's usually enough time to finish an assignment or make copies of the pages if you need to. They won't always have the books you need, but this doesn't hurt to check. Just keep in mind that other students are also looking for the same books, so get to the library early to make sure you have them. I also asked my friend at Kenya Almeida on November 21st of this year about how she has cleverly evaded the bookstore for one and a half years. And she says the secret to her success is to share books with friends. These friends are usually people who have already taken the class and have their books still and they'll just let her borrow it. Or she'll ask friends who are in her class or in a class at a different class at a different time that they already bought their book and she'll share with them. She usually just copies the pages or take notes from the book and give it back to them. That way she doesn't have to spend a single dime on any book for any of her classes. So based on what she said, my advice is to get some friends on the job. Well, I disagree. Aren't you grateful for this school? You should be thankful that people like me go through so much trouble to run this bookstore for you. On November 23rd of 2015, I interviewed the director of the ECC bookstore, my manager, Kelly Strassner. When asked why she would encourage students to purchase books from the ECC bookstore, she answered that the school bookstore is owned and operated by the college. The bookstore does not get outside funding, so workers and bills are covered by the money students pay. Here's the important part. My manager said that all of the extra revenue is turned over to the Board of Trustees and is distributed to other school services on campus, like Child Care and the Visual Arts Center. The money you spend in the bookstore stays on campus. But there are other ways that you can support the college and funnel your money back into it. You can purchase school apparel, <laughs> attend school theater and music productions, you can buy food from the school, all of these options are less costly, which make them more appealing to students, seeing as many of us don't have the money for these costly textbooks. Well, according to Federal Student Aid, which I accessed on November 25th of 2015, college or career school costs can vary significantly, and there are many schools with affordable tuition and generous financial assistance. Here at ECC, students can apply for financial aid to help cover the costs of textbooks. Well, of course you can apply for financial aid, but not everyone's going to get it. In an interview with T.J. Winfrey on November 25th of 2015, he stated that despite being from a single family or a family with single parent income, he was denied the opportunity for financial aid. I'm in a similar situation myself. One of my parents is retired, but they still claimed that my other parent made too much money. Families that are put in these situations are forced to then take out loans, which in return, sends the student out of college in thousands of dollars of debt. Because of these hard times we're in, it's in a student's best interest to look for alternative ways to get their required course materials. Not everyone has the means to pay for textbooks, especially with the prices rising. There are always going to be cheaper options, unless you don't even want to buy the book at all. I guess buying books at the bookstore isn't for everybody. Now that I know all of this, I don't want that book anymore. With the money that I saved, let's go buy some new coffee. Yeah. <laughs>